Now we will move on to the articulating surface. So the first subheading is over. Type of joint you will put it like it is a type of synovial joint coming under the type bicondyla variety. Now we will move on to the articular surface. Articular surface of this temporomandibular joint whenever we talk about a joint there will be an upper part and a lower part. So let us see which is the upper surface, upper articular surface you can see the temporal bone here this is the temporal bone. So this will be uh, forming the upper articular surface. Now you have the mandible lower down here so the condyle of mandible will be forming the lower articular surface. So this will be the upper articular surface and this will be the lower articular surface. So when we talk about the upper articular surface we can say that if we just put it under a schematic diagram, we can just show a concave convex surface. It is very easy to draw. When you draw the diagrams, it need not be a three dimensional diagram. You can just put it in the form of line diagrams. So, the upper articular surface, we can just put it like a concave convex. So, this is behind to forward, forward curve. So, if we look from behind to forward, it will first form a concave, concave surface then followed by the convex. Okay. So, this is a concave convex upper articular surface that is formed by the temporal bone and the next thing is formed by the head of the mandible that is the condyle. So, the lower articular surface is formed by the head of the mandible. So, lower down you get the head of the mandible. So, this will be the head of the mandible. So, when we talk about the articular surface, it has got an upper one and a lower one. Upper articular surface is concave, convex from behind forwards and lower one is formed by the condyle of mandible. Now, normally this is considered as an atypical synovial joint. Why is it called an atypical? Normally, when we talk about a synovial joint, we talk about the articular surface and the next point we talk about is the cartilage lining the articular surface. So in mostly all cases of synovial joint, the articular surface is covered by hyaline cartilage. But this is a place where of course there will be some exceptions and again this is a place where you will get an exception that is the lining cartilage in this joint will be fibrocartilage. Hence this is called atypical synovial joint, atypical synovial joint. So the reason is normally any synovial joint if you take it will be lined by, so this region will be lined by hyaline articular cartilage whereas in this joint temporomandibular joint instead of the hyaline articular cartilage you get fibrocartilage. Hence this is not following the general rule of a synovial joint. Hence we consider it as a typical synovial joint. Now we have seen there are two articular surfaces. Normally a synovial joint you will have two bones. It will be lined by a cartilage and that is it. But again there are some exceptions. Here in between these two bones you get something in between. So what could it be? That is you get an intermediate thing line between the two bony articular surfaces. This is called articular disc. So this joint is actually divided into an upper compartment, the compartment lying above this disc and a lower compartment the part which is lying below the disc. So this synovial joint entirely is divided into an upper compartment and a lower compartment by an articular disc lying in between and this articular disc is made up of fibrocartilage. So how will we name the upper compartment and lower compartment and what is the importance of the upper compartment and lower compartment? Why can't we consider this as a single synovial joint? So all these things you will be having in your mind when we talk about the fibrocartilaginous articular disc. Though we say that uh, the articular disc is fibrocartilaginous, it is mainly made up of collagen fibers and a few cartilage cells. 
So though we say that this is fibrocartilaginous, it is mainly made up of collagen fibers. So we have already mentioned the upper articular surface as like this, concavo, convex from behind forwards. But when we talk about the articular disc, it has got an upper surface which is in contact with the upper articular surface and it has got a lower surface which is in contact with the condyle of mandible. So this articular disc should fit in between smoothly for the smooth movement. So when we talk about the articular disc, the fibrocartilaginous articular disc, it should have a concave part which is fitting it should have a concave part which is fitting into the convex part and a convex part which is fitting into the concave part in the upper aspect. Okay, so this is a fibrocartilaginous disc. So it should have a concave part which is fitting into the convex part of the temporal bone and a convex part which is fitting into the concave part of the temporal bone. So that is about the upper surface of the fibrous articular disc but the lower part lower part is simply concave the lower part is simply concave which will be in connection with the condyle of the mandible so when we talk about the fibrocartilaginous articular disc it has got a convex and concave parts which directly fits in with the upper articular surface and the lower part which is just concave which helps to include the condyle of the mandible. So this is the fibrocartilaginous articular disc and uh, sometimes this may be asked as a one of the sub question in case of SA. So we can little bit elaborate on it. We have already mentioned it is a fibrocartilaginous disc. Though we say that it is fibrocartilaginous it is mainly made up of collagen fibers with a few cartilage cells and it has got three parts the anterior lamina which extends anteriorly the intermediate the intermediate zone and the posterior lamina the posterior lamina extends like this this is how a fibrocartilaginous articular disc will look like it has got an anterior lamina it has got an intermediate band or intermediate zone and the posterior lamina which splits into two. So this is about the fibrocartilaginous articular disc if you want to mention it. So the anterior band where is it attaching? The anterior band of the fibrocartilaginous articular disc is attached to the articular tubercle. You have the articular tubercle of the temporal bone. So the anterior lamina is getting attached to the articular tubercle of the temporal bone and posterior lamina is getting attached to the squamous tympanic fissure. So these details not at all needed but if asked you should know this band cannot stand uh, singly. So it should get attached anteriorly and posteriorly. So anteriorly it is getting attached to the articular tubercle of the temporal bone and posteriorly it is getting attached to the squamous tympanic fissure. So this is about the fibrocartilaginous articular disc.